what is Breakthrough Accelerator? So we are a business accelerator, but we're not like any business accelerator you might have heard of. We are actually really focused on learning by doing and experiential training that is rooted in emotional intelligence. And what this means is that as part of this accelerator, we are investing in the businesses that are the game changers, that are looking to make the world a better place through the business that they're doing, making better choices, changing the systems, changing the processes, changing the way we've always done things because there is a better way and we can create a win-win for everyone. And we want to invest in those businesses. We now have $850,000 on the table of investment capital to invest in your business. So if this is exciting for you, if you are one of these people that says, yes, I'm in, and we know some of you are already in, we have some students in here. Um, if you're a game changer, join us. Sign up for a free consult. Brad will put a link in the chat. We'd love to talk to you to qualify your business and see what you're up to and see if we're a good fit. So with that, I really want to introduce our speaker today because Michael Anderson is, we are so honored to have him. First of all, thank you so much, Michael. Let me tell you a little bit about uh, our amazing speaker today. So Michael is a three-time software entrepreneur from California and his companies have landed on the uh, Inc. 5000 list and he was named the number one best place to work. So his skills, experience and passion in the industry have placed him as one of the most sought after business leadership consultants in the world. And he advises leaders at some of the top companies in the world. You might've heard of some of these, Microsoft, Salesforce. <laughs> so, uh, you know, these companies bring Michael in to teach their managers the skills that they need to grow the business as well as, as themselves. So it's personal and professional development all wrapped into one. And so we are so excited and honored to have Michael join us today. And so I'm going to let Michael take it away. Michael, let's talk about leadership styles and how we can become better leaders in our world. Welcome. And Absolutely. Thank and, and thanks, uh, Brad and Allison, for having me in that, in that great introduction. And as we get in, I'm just going to, so we are going to talk about people's leadership styles and such. And to do that, if you haven't already, you're going to take a, a, a really short eight question quiz that is going to tell you your specific leadership style. And, and if you haven't taken the quiz already, um, I want you to go and. I just posted the link in the chat for you, Michael. Great, great. And I just want to pop it on here so everybody is sure to see it. And then I'm going to take it off in a second. Um, so literally, if you don't, haven't done this, go here. You can even put, put us on mute. I'm going to tell my little backstory real quick before we get into all the content. Because what you're going to do is you're going to get your specific leadership type. And then we're going to talk about your leadership type and the other ones and how what your strengths and weaknesses is, are and then how you relate to the other ones. And that's really where, where the... Um, where the power of this is. And, and if you talk about interactive uh, presentations and takeaways, that's really, that's how I really designed this because, you know, as much as I love to hear myself speak, which I really do, but um, this is really about giving you some, some, uh, some meaningful content about you yourself, who, how you can interact with other people. And then we're going to do a breakout where you, you get to, to, to meet up with some other leaders and really debrief on this and, and, and to really ground it into your, your consciousness so that when you leave, you can hopefully be a better leader um, and create more of an impact out here. So go do that now. If you put us on, on mute for a couple minutes so you can concentrate, that's cool. You're going to, you will get an email. That's the only way the technology can do it. You're going to get an email. So it's going to pop up there and then come on back. The people that have done it already, I'm just going to tell you a little bit more. Allison gave me a great, she told the highlights. I'm going to tell you the lowlights about my background, which everybody likes. Everybody's like, we don't care what you did. Let's tell, hear how you screwed up. So I, I'll, I'll tell you that. And I, I do know a lot about leadership because I was a really, really horrible leader when I started out. Um, look, I, I was a good programmer. I was a good technical person. And that created some success in my life. And, you know, because when, when I started out, I'm, you know, I'm not, I was hungry. I worked hard. I'm, I'm an intelligent guy. And I, I, I would be the last person you know, there at the office because I really wanted to succeed. And that did bring me some success. I, you know, I worked for a, a larger organization. I, I climbed my way up the corporate ladder into some director and VP positions. And then what I did is, and I was based overseas for a couple of years with some multinational software companies. I moved back to San Diego. That's where I met Brad. Um, uh, it was actually pretty, uh, really well known in the, in the community out there. But before I met him, when, right when I moved out uh, to San Diego and I started my first software company, 
we really had some success quickly. So I, we, we got to be a couple million dollars in just a couple of years, a couple million dollars of revenue, a couple of years, uh, because I saw a gap in the marketplace. Uh, we didn't take any outside investment. And, um, and then all of a sudden I realized that, that I have a real company here. I started out just doing consulting and then I had to add people, add people, add people. And, um, you know, part of my story has to do with, I, I was young, you know, I was in my, my early to mid thirties. Um, and, uh, and I was a bit insecure. I mean, everything was happening so quickly. I had all this responsibility. There was a, uh, one of my key employees I gave some equity to. And so he became a business partner of mine. So I gave him a, a you know, a share of the business, a, a minority share. And what happened is that we started to, as it grow, as it grew, we had more and more customers. We had more and more staff, him and I, um, butted heads because I was risky. I wanted to grow it. He was, he was older than me. He had, you know, a kid in college. He had some, some different expenses. He was, so we had different visions um, and it was causing some friction between us. And April 1st, uh, 2007 was a very, very um, uh, profound day in my life because I remember exactly what happened. And, and it was about 10 a.m. on a Wednesday. So we were in the office. I was in my office. Uh, and, and this guy came to me, my business partner came to me and he asked me a question. And it was just, it was, an, it was just sort of an everyday operational question. And I gave him an answer. And it, and it wasn't an answer he was expecting. And tensions were high around this time because we were having real dis strategic disagreements, disagreements about his equity, all, all these different big things were, were hanging over us. And, you know, and it's like, I think things just came to a head because we, we started, you know, getting in this back and forth and it was a disagreement. And, you know, he started, he was, I'm, I'm pretty calm, but he, he had the tendency to get excited. And so, you know, as this conversation went on, he started getting more and more upset and I'm sitting at my desk and he's in my, my doorway and, and his, I don't know if you've ever seen anybody who got, gets so angry that they get red and they start shaking and he, and he started yelling at me. And that's what he was doing. And I said, hey, I understand you're upset about this, but you know, we get employees around. Let's handle this after, you know, after working hours because we would both stay late. And I thought that was the end of it. And he, he, you know, he, he had this look on his face and then he, he stepped out of the, the doorway and then he steps back in the doorway so angry. And he said, you know what? I'm going to knock that smile off your face. And, and I was like, what? And then he came in, he walked around, around my desk. He leans back with all his might, he hits me. So April 1st, 2007 at uh, 10 a.m. on a Wednesday, I got assaulted in my own office by my business partner. And it's not that it hurt, you know, I saw it coming. So I, I you know, I, 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 I ducked and he was just, you know, I looked back, he was so angry and then he just left. I got up and I shut the door and I'm like, wow what's going on. And uh, luckily I met some other entrepreneurs. I, I knew some other uh, business owners. I called them. I said, Hey, this just happened. What do I do? And the one guy, he coached me through it and he said, you know, if this happened once, it's going to happen again. So you got to address this. This is not going to go away. Don't put your head in the sand. So I went to the, to the, to the cops. I, I, I registered it. Um, I got a, a, a um, an attorney, I could, uh, I could fortunately fire him because I was a majority owner. So when he came to work the next day, I had an armed security guard handing him his termination letter and a copy of the lawsuit. Um, and um, and I, it, it really sent me into a tailspin because um, I didn't know, was I going to lose my business? Uh, you know, he, he was, my, he was the, the in charge of the operation. So I had to tell all the employees, the guy you used to uh, report to, he's no longer here because he hit me. And... Um, and I had to call the customers that he dealt with every day and tell them he's no longer here, even though he was a, you know, executive here and I couldn't tell him why. And it was just this massive amount of stress. I never dealt with anything like that in my life. And I'll never forget that evening because that, that evening was a real turning point in my life. And I'll be quite honest with you. You know, I had the, uh, you know, I was sitting on the, the, the sofa in my, in my condo um, in San Diego and I had the Johnny Walker poured. I was rolling a joint. I was going to do some cocaine because at that point in my life, that's how I dealt with problems. And I don't know if you've ever been through a really difficult time that really let you um, reevaluate your life and really step back. And that's, that's the situation I was in because it's like all this stuff was happening. And I always wanted to own a business. Here I is, I'm owning a business and I'm failing. And even before this episode happened, I wasn't having fun. There was so much responsibility. I was just trying to get to the next day. I felt like an imposter. I felt like a fraud. It was not fun at all. I can, I can honestly say that. 
And all, and now this happened. And, and I thought, am I, am I not meant to be a leader? Maybe I should just go back to being a programmer, selling my time out, making good money, not having all this stress. And I said, you know, screw that. I've always wanted to do this. I just, I just need to make some different decisions. And so I made two life-changing decisions that evening. Instead of doing the drugs and alcohol, I decided to do something healthy for myself. So instead of doing the self-destructive behavior, I went for a jog. Uh, so that was the first one. And the second one is, as I told myself, I'm a good doer. I'm good at goals. I just have had the wrong goals. And so I thought, what should my goal be? So my goals should be find out how to get happier and find out how to be a good leader. And then, so I said that those are going to be my new goals. And I, I pretty much set everything up in my life to achieve those goals. And the one thing that I did, so I got coaches, I got training on being a leader and all those help. But I also ended up uh, earning a very, signing up and earning a very unique master's degree in spiritual psychology. And when I talk about spiritual psychology, it has nothing to do with religion, but it's, it's we learned six different psychoanalysis techniques, but we learn it from a place of pure love and compassion. And, and the funny thing is, it, it changed my personal life 180 degrees. But then when I started applying what I learned there to my leadership, my leadership started to, to thrive. Um, because, and people ask me, why that was. And then, you know, a couple shifts happened to me because I finally was comfortable going through all this self-development. I mean, it's like self-development on steroids, the, you know, the, the master's program that I went through. Um, I learned so much about myself. I looked area in area and I know Allison and Brad, that's one thing they do with the breakthrough accelerator. They really help people go through this transformation. That's why that's so powerful. And, um, and for me, you know, it's like, I, I finally learned who I was and I got comfortable with myself. I think people, I think a lot of the people on here will get that because I was trying to be other people. I was trying to be who other people wanted. I thought they wanted me to be, you know, I had some great mentors in my life. So I was trying to model how they looked, how they acted, how they spoke to people instead of, of fi finding out who my true self was and interacting from people from that authentic point of view. So much is, is talked about as authenticity and vulnerability, but I, I think those are results of getting more comfortable and knowing and trusting yourself. Um, and, you know, when I started applying them to my leadership, I started to become, I started to really connect to my employees. We started to really deliver great value to our customers. Um, and we started to give back to the community, which I think all of us really want to do deep down as business leaders. Um, and, and I started to have fun. That was externally. And, 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 and like Allison said, we were listed on the Inc. 5000 list because of our fast growth. We were voted number one best place to work, which I'm really proud of. And I was social entrepreneur of the year because of our give back. And, um, and that's externally, but internally, I was finally having fun because I, I, I saw the growth in, in my employees. I, 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 we, were, we were adding so much value out there and that, that, that really was so much fun. And, and I spent, so I spent 20 years in accounting software. And I know, I know what you're thinking, you're like, Mike, what could be more sexy mix, mixing accounting and software? I know I get it. I was sort of a rock star out there, but um, I was like, uh, um, and I did enjoy, I really enjoyed my time as nerdy as it was in enterprise software, but I'm like, Hey, it's time for something new. And so some of my friends, my, my business owner friends saw what I was doing with my, my companies. Cause at, the, at one time I had three companies and they said, Hey, can you come help me? Uh, they, they saw the change in me and the company. So they asked me to, to, to help them out. And so I started coaching and mentoring them. And, 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 you know, the rest is history. I get a couple of best-selling books. I write for entrepreneur.com. Um, you know, some of PwC brings me in to, to work with their, their high growth clients. Stanford universities has brought, has brought me in to, um, to work with their startup ecosystem. And, and, and again, I think that's why Brad and Allison and I really connected because I really believe leaders, you know, it used to be that activists, you know, Nelson Mandela and Mother Teresa and people like that changed the world. Now it's business leaders. And there's a lot of awesome leadership out there. And I think we forget that. And it's really up to, to everybody to, to be the most powerful leader we can because we affect so many people. So um, that, that was meant to be my short uh, uh, intro to myself, my story, but I wanted to give everybody a little bit of context about how I got here. And it, and it was a lot of learning for me. And I, I still make mistakes and things, but it's just, it's really powering through this. But I, I wanted to talk about uh, the leadership types. Um, and so, but anyway, just to give you a little bit of con con um, context on me, and there's four leadership types. And, and this is loosely based on DISC. So if you've been through DISC, 
uh, th there is one out there. And we're going to talk not just about the leadership types, but how they relate to everybody, to, to, to the other ones, because I think that's very, very important. So right now, I just want you to either take a picture of this or write it down, because these are four leadership types, or you can actually write down the, um, the initials, DC, VI, LC, SC, because I'm going to write them on my right whiteboard, because if you're anything like me, you're tired of watching PowerPoint presentations. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my little, my little whiteboard thing because it, it gives me a little bit of energy. It's a little more fun. And then you get to see some interaction instead of this. So just to, you can put, jot that on a little piece of paper. You can, you can, um, you can uh, um, take a little picture of it. Or to be honest, you could probably do, it, do without it because we're going to do a lot of talking. And again, I'm going to give you some of the context. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you um, each of the strengths. I'm going to talk about where people like this run into their ceiling because to me what anybody who wants to reach, reach their potential they have to understand their strengths embrace their strengths play to their strengths but then they also have to look at where their weak spots are and they either have to to, to put in systems or or put in basically people so that their 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 strengths don't hold their their weaknesses or blind spots don't hold them back and, and we all have them and and, and this is a, a, an easy way to get there so Hopefully everybody's got that. Um, I'm going to go back and stop sharing my screen. Uh, and then we are going to do a breakout because it, it's really, uh, um, it's really a, a powerful when you can share this, especially just after you learn some of these things. So, all right, or, or, let me just go to, um, are we good? Just give me a thumbs up if everybody's with me here. So I'm just making sure everybody, all right, good, good. <laughs> Thanks. I never know because here I'm just talking this little stupid camera here. I don't even know if anybody's listening. So thanks for the thumbs up, everybody. Um, do the best we can, right? That's my motto through all this stuff. All right. So let's start with our thing. And then we have, so we have the dominant commanders here. We have the visionary influencers here. We have the logical creators and the supportive collaborators. And that's, oh my gosh, I am going to uh, maybe shut my blinds. Give me one second. Ugh. Well, that's even, it's not good either. Let me turn this guy off. All right. Yeah, everybody can see that, right? More or less. Is that, is that, okay, good, good, good. All right, let's talk about the dominant commanders up here. So dominant commanders are the people that are the drivers, the dominant commanders. That's hence the name of that dominant commander. And these are the people that are very, very goal oriented. Um, these are the people that, uh, and, and I don't talk about politics, but I do bring politicians up because uh, it helps us relate to people. But, you know, for example, Donald Trump is a dominant commander. He's like, look, I don't have time for small talk. Here's what I'm talking about. Boom, there it is. Um, dominant commanders don't like small talk. They, they, they are only interested in achieving goals. They, they actually are natural born leaders because they really in, in love being in charge. They really relish power and they relish being in charge. So that's what the dominant commander is. Um, visionary influencers. I'm just going to go through the four quickly and then we're going to dig into um, into each one and then talk about how they relate to each other. Uh, visionary influencers are the high, um, are, are the people that have this great vision. They're great at relationships. They love to talk. They have great, big, huge visions, but they hate details and they get, they, they get stuck in the details. So that's what they are. So People that are visionary influencers are like Elon Musk. Actually, Elon Musk is a bit of a, because I know he's like an engineer type guy, but, you know, he, he's this guy who has these great massive visions, and he really likes to talk about these, these huge visions out there. Um, you have supportive collaborators, and, and visionary influencers are natural leaders as well, because, again, they are big picture type people. They're, 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 they're that type of thing. SCs are the supportive collaborators. Um, and the supportive collaborators are people that are, are love to support others. They're not natural born leaders. Sometimes they are in leadership. So that's why they need, they need to, uh, you know, really to understand this about themselves because they often come out of support roles. They're there to help out other people. They love being personal assistants. They love doing the support desk. They love being these people that are the second in command, the third in command, supporting the team. They love the harmony that they create. They're really driven by a harmony. And, and so the, the one that the, the, they don't always take the reins. So even when they're promoted, 
you know, maybe you have a support, you know, a bunch of support desk managers, you, you, so you, you um, promote somebody, but they don't like the conflict, right? They don't like to say, hey, I'm the leader, this is where we're going. So it's not natural to them. And then you have the LCs, the logical creators, and the LCs are very analytical, so that they like the data. And, you know, um, if you look at, at leaders who are LCs, Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates, logical creators, they're not this extroverted, they're not in your face, but they're very smart and they want the data and they're gonna move forward like that. Uh, me, I sit right here. I sit halfway between a dominant commander and, and an LC. Allison and Brad, where are you two at? Let's map you two out here on here. Michael, you had me figured out in the first 30 seconds of talking. I'm a uh, visionary influencer. And half yeah, an hour so that's later, why you're great at all these. That's stop talking. <laughs> yeah, that's why you're great at all these relationships. How, Allison, how about you? I'm I'm right between visionary influencer and supportive collaborator. Good. So you are yeah. the relationship of relationship people, right? That's because me. It, it's important to understand these axes. So the, on this end, you're more relationship driven, and on this axis, you're more data driven. And so for me, I have to work hard at relating to people. And, and so, for example, um, I had a technology company. And when I would work with, with, with my CTO, who was very much um, down here, and, uh, and she was on this end. So she really wanted, and when I ran my companies, I was a little more of the dominant commander because I was very goal oriented That brought that out in me. And so... We, me and her, my CTO and, and I used to have a lot of um, um, conflict. We didn't often get along while well, we respected each other and we liked each other, but we would trigger each other. And finally, I had a great coach that came in and done, did some profiling similar to this. And she, really, she told me like, look, Sharon, she really wants to do a good job, but you have to slow the F down, right? When you get, want to give her something, you don't give her, because I could write one, one, one line emails, go do this, right? And to me, it's like, I'm telling them what to do. What's the problem? And that would really freak her out. Like, I don't understand the context. I want to do a good job. What about this? What about this? What about this? And so Michelle, my coach, Michelle Saul, she sat me down and she's like, look, when you're talking to Sharon, you have to allow five to 10 to 15 minutes. You're not going to have this one or two things like I would with a salesperson. The salesperson would be like, you know, call that person. They'd be like, gotcha. And boom, they'd be off doing it. Don't do that with Sharon. It freaks her out, makes her, makes her nervous. Sit down with her, tell her what you wanted her to do, why you're doing it, ask her if she has any questions, and then say all that again, because that's going to make her comfortable. It, it transformed our relationship, transformed our relationship. And also my, my coach worked with Sharon and said, sometimes Michael's going to be a bit short and he's going to freak you out and slow him down. Say, uh, maybe come back to him later, um, you know, maybe work with him. So that's why it's important not just to know your personality type, but to know the person you're dealing with. And, and it's up to you as the leader to adapt your personality type to them. The more you work with somebody, especially somebody who's there to support you, it's, it, it's good to, to, to tell them how to do that. So if I have a personal assistant, sometimes, you know, I can tell, you know, I want to know what they are, but I'm, I'm, you know, I also want to know, you know, if they're in a support role, it's important for them to know how to support you or, or if they're peer groups, it's, it's better, to, you know, it's great to have everybody do it. But I'm a basketball player. I don't know. I'm super tall. I'm six foot eight. And we used to say, if you used to pass somebody the ball and they didn't catch it, it's your fault for not giving them a pass that they can handle. And so it's sort of like this. If you're commuting with some, communicating with somebody and you're the leader, it's up to you to make sure that whatever you're, commuti you're, you're communicating with has landed. Um, and I know there's chats. Uh, Brad, I'm gonna leave it up to you to let me know if any questions come through there. Maybe you can, we, you can, also, you can interrupt me or, or, or we can pause every so often. I just, I, I can't concentrate on too many things at one time. So um, we got you. So, <laughs> so let's just talk about how you can easily ta tell what somebody is. So again, this is more relationship driven and this is more data driven. This is more extroverted. This is more introverted. And, and or you might say this is more bold and this is more um, uh, not, not shy, could be shy or, you know, uh, uh, you know, likes their own time, likes to be on their own. Um, so visionary influencers, you know what, they talk, they laugh, they love to have fun, they're jovial, you know, that's why Brad's a relationship guy, he'll talk, he'll call anybody, he'll talk, 
I, I bet, Brad, you have a five-minute conversation. It turns into a two-hour just chat fest, isn't it, right? And then you're like, oh, I'm late, I'm late. And then you talk for another half an hour. <laughs> so I, I got my, my, my neighbor, Hugh. He's a visionary influencer. He used to run uh, one of the major re record labels here. And it's funny because, you know, I'll say, hey, let, let's get together for a coffee. I don't have time, but I'll see him walking his dog. He'll stop and we'll chat for like 20 minutes. I'm like, dude, why don't we just go somewhere for coffee? He's like, no, I got to go. And then he'll keep talking and keep talking. <laughs> it's just like, but he's so present and he, he just, um, so that's, so if you, if you're ever around somebody who, who, who talks a lot, who, who loves just the relationship, who, who likes to have fun, who laughs a lot, tells jokes, they're this visionary influencer, right? So that's how you know a visionary influencer. Supportive collaborators, they're quiet. Right? They're going to stand in the back of the room. They're not going to, they're, they're going to want to make sure everybody's okay. Hey, are you okay? Is everything okay? Can I, can I help you out in any way? They're, 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 you know, they, they normally have a, a softer voice. They, they really are looking for this harmony. They're, they're going to be um, you know, not the person to put themselves out there. So they're, they're going to be a bit withdrawn in their body language and things. They're not going to, they're not going to volunteer themselves. And so that's the supportive collaborator. Um, then you have the logical creators are the, the very analytical people. Show me proof of that. Uh, show me the data. They're probably going to talk a bit in a monotonous voice. They are probably going to have everything really organized in their life, in their desk, how they dress. They, they might be immaculately dressed. And then dominant commanders, they're going to be a bit in your face. They don't even know they're in your face or they're frustrated you're not in their face. Um, they're going to challenge you. They're going to be the people that are pushing, pushing forward. They're probably going to be somewhat loud and to the point and, and very short sentences. Hey, what are you doing today? What's up? What's going on? What do you need? Right? That's how a dominant commander is going to approach you. And, and, and they're not, they're, they're not angry at you. That's just how they're going through life. They just want to know what's coming next so they can address the next thing, solve it and move to the next thing. Okay. Now, does that make sense? That, 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 that give you a little bit of, of, of ways to uh, do that? Let me look at the time, 5.30. Okay, we're going to dig a little deeper into these four. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the drivers of each of them uh, and then where they run into issues and how they should relate to the other ones. And then we're going to do the breakouts. So take notes. And then when we do the breakouts, um, what I want you to do, because I want to give you a heads up on the breakouts so you can make a note or two. Uh, when we get to the breakouts, you're going to tell uh, we're going to probably do breakouts of probably four people in a breakout so everybody can get a decent amount of talking. That's cool, Brad. Um, you're going to obviously tell everybody else what your, um, what your uh, uh, leadership type is. Um, one thing that you learned about your leadership type, about your strengths or your drivers, or your motivations. And then one thing about where a blind spot is, either in how you're working or how you're living your life or, or a relationship and how you can change your actions to better, uh, to better relate to somebody or to better handle. So one thing that you learned about your drivers your or, or, and, and, and your, your, your strengths, and one thing that you can change to make you a more effective leader and business person. Good. Um, all right, so let's go to dominant commander first because they're the most fun to pick on because they, they don't even care really that you're picking on. They just want to know how to succeed more. So they are driven by winning and succeeding. And um, and oh, one, one other thing is, of course, some people are going to be like right here on the dominant commander stage. Some people are going to be like, you know, obviously there can be some, some hybrids. And I wanted to make my leadership type um, quiz simple. So, I, you know, there's only eight questions. So it doesn't tell you how far you are towards one or the other. So just keep in mind, especially if the questions were a little, because a good clue is like, oh, I could have answered one or the other. And, and, you know, look at your behavior. If you know your dominant commander, but you're a bit analytical, and you're, you're a bit of an introvert, then you're a logical commander. But if you're a dominant commander, but you love relationships, you love chatting, then you're there. So just, you know, you put some discretion in there. So dominant commanders, they, they, they are driven by success. They, they're, um, so they're, they're, they're driven by power. They're driven by being in charge. They're driven by control. And just the same, their biggest fear is losing control. Their biggest fear is not being in charge. So that's with dominant commanders. And, 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 and so again, this is, if you are a dominant commander or somebody in your team is or your boss is, it's good to know these things. So if you, for example, if your boss is a dominant commander, you don't ever want to, them to feel that they're not in charge or that something is not their idea. 
right? Because that's going to put them on the offensive. They don't go on the defensive. Demel, dominant commanders only go on the offensive. Um, and again, without getting political, I say this just from sort of a psychological standpoint. You can see that from Donald Trump, right? If he thinks he's being attacked, he will go on the offense. He's a very, you know, that that's where that, that behavior comes from. Um, they are, what they have to do, oh, dominant commanders also don't like to be told how to do things. And so people, uh, a lot of business owners are a bit rebellious. And you have to be careful because if you're working in an organization or you have investors and you are a dominant commander, sometimes you're going to get something to do or a task to do from somebody in charge and you're going to want to do it your own way. And that's going to frustrate people. So you have the natural instinct to rebel against authority and to do things your own way, which sometimes can work really good. But this really hurt me because when I was a business owner and I would, I, when it came to marketing, I would have to do it my own way. Now what I do is I, I want to find out best practices. I want to get coaches. I'm too old to, to learn all this crap myself because what I would do before is go out, do a bunch of reading. I, I'm a smart guy. So I would pick a lot of it up. I would do it myself. I spent a whole lot of effort for often immediate mediocre result because I had to do it my own way. And that caused a lot of stress. I was overworked. So that's, that's dom little heads up from one dominant commander to another. Um, the, the issues you have to be aware of as dominant commanders is you can come off as abrasive and arrogant. So unless you control yourself, unless you uh, self-regulate yourself, you're going to come off as a bit of a bully. And you can bully yourself because you think everybody is like you. Everybody is not like you. Everybody doesn't have this massive drive and massive push. So you have to realize people aren't like you. And if you don't realize that, you're going to push people away and you're going to make enemies. And look, it's a lot easier to go through life with a bunch of friends than a bunch of enemies because people will feel stepped on by you and then they will, will hamper your, your, your growth later on. Um, you can take on too much and you, you're normally not a good delegator because probably you've tried to delegate yourself and, and what either happened or, or before and what happened is you had something to delegate, you gave it to somebody, but you didn't spend enough time telling them, telling them properly how to do it. So you, you, you know, basically you found somebody else in your company with a, with a clue. You just dumped it on them, didn't give them enough backup. They didn't give them enough support. They failed. You took it back over because you're like, oh, nobody can do this but me. It's really important. And now you're stuck doing everything yourself because you don't take the time to really delegate properly. Um, and this goes into the third thing. You lack collaboration and patience. You want to do everything yourself or you want your team to do everything themselves. You, you don't collaborate with other departments well enough and you don't have enough patience. Once you have an idea, you're like, all right, we're going to do this tomorrow. Hold on a second. You have great ideas. You can, pu you can push forward, but you also want to give yourself time enough to have a proper plan, time enough to think through it. If there's anybody should, I think everybody should meditate, but if anybody should de 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 meditate, it's dominant commanders because then they're going to get more mindfulness and reflection in their life. So those are the three issues. You can come off as a brave, as abrasive and arrogant. You take on too much and you lack proper delegation. You lack collaboration and patience. Um, you will often burn out. A lot of dominant commanders burn out and, and it's a tough thing to see. All right, so that's DC up there. And again, um, throw some questions in. We'll handle, we'll have, we'll have questions at the end. If you have an urgent question, let me know. We'll, we'll handle as we go along. Um, visionary influencers. Visionary influence. You guys are so fun to party with. You guys are so fun to have coffee with. You guys are so fun to have to have, have dinner with. Um, it, yes, it's very very amazing. You are your driver is um, being part of the group and being the number one in the group. Your competitive uh, dominant commanders are. They want to win. They want to be number one. Um, Visionary influencers like to be number one because they like to be seen as number one. They like the, the, the attention of being number one. Their drivers are being seen as this really important person. Um, their fear is loss of popularity, rejection, and missing out on things. And, and we're going to talk about where that can, that can happen. They are starters, not finishers. You guys are great at starting things. Um, you say yes too much. So it is one of the things where anything that comes, you, you have this fear of missing out. Do you want to do this? Yes. Do you want to be on this committee? Yes. Do you want to do this? Yes. And then what happens is you get this huge to-do list. You're crap at, at details. You're crap at prioritization. Then all of a sudden you miss all these deadlines. People are frustrated with you. 
and then you you know you're 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 getting things done late. This creates a lot of internal stress. Um, that's what happens to visionary influencers. Um, you are amazing because you have great relationships. That is where your real strengths comes in, and you are this high level 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 thinker. Um, your couple uh, uh, blind spots is. Some people don't take you seriously because they see you as a daydreamer, you know, especially logical, especially people down here. You know, it's people at the, at the, at the, at the end, you know, dominant commanders will really intimidate supportive collaborators. Um, and supportive collaborators will really feel intimidated by dominant commanders. And dominant commanders are like the supportive collaborators. Come on, do it, do it, do it. But if you get a great supportive collaborator can really support a dominant commander and a dominant commander can really um, clear the way for, for supportive collaborators. Just the same, when you have logical creators and visionary influencers, this person will be looking for details. A visionary influencer will be like, oh my gosh, here's the plan. Here's what I want to do. This person will be like, well, but, but how are we going to get there? And this person will be like, it doesn't matter. We're just going to do it. And so there's this natural conflict there. Of, uh, and so and a lot of the logical creators will be like, I, I hate this person. They, they, they talk, but they don't say anything. And I don't, I don't understand what they're doing. So we have to be careful of the other people on the quadrant. And so you have to be careful because you might be seen as a daydreamer and other people aren't going to take you seriously. Um, <clears throat> you don't like rejection. You don't like having difficult conversations with people because you don't want them not to like you. Um, you sometimes have problems making harsh decisions. So when it comes to very, very difficult decisions, you'll put it off, put it off, put it off, hoping it'll go away and it'll get worse. And then you have to deal with that type of thing as that. Um, sometimes uh, uh, visionary influencers, they will throw themselves in to really difficult to see, uh, into high level leadership roles, but then they'll get uh, an imposter syndrome because they'll feel like, oh my gosh, I don't belong. And then people are going to find out and then I'm going to lose. And then, and then I'm going to look like a fraud. And then that everything's going to come crashing down because I, I want to be this person and they're faking it till they make it. And then they, they really worry that people will find that out. Um, they, they don't, again, I talked about, they don't follow through. It's attention to detail and it's getting things done. And so if there's a visionary influencer on your team, you, you, you know, again, you want to put them in charge of relationships. You don't want to give them a bunch of detail, but you also have to make sure they have the systems in. Because to me, when you have weaknesses, if you can't, if you can't eliminate the weaknesses, because look, details are part of everybody's life. So you have to put the, the whether it's software systems, whether it's checks and balances, whether it's, 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 it's new habits, you really need to, to, to help them put systems in, or if this is you, systems in to really make sure you have a prioritization system, you have a time management system, and there's checks and balances around that. So that, that's visionary influencers. Um, Logical creators, um, so the analytical people, the engineers of the group. So we are the perfectionists, right? We, um, what, what drives us is getting things done the right way. And we, we really, nothing lights us up more than doing a project the right way. And if we can get praise for that, all the better. But we know we did it the right way. And so, and, but, and, um, and if we get what, what our fear is, is getting criticized without a reason. That, that really, that really is, is, is bad for us, getting things wrong. So if I'm entrusted to a really important project and I don't do things the right way and it doesn't turn out the right way or it doesn't turn out the right way and there was a process problem in my process or how I did it, that really is soul crushing to me. Um, I, we're perfectionist, we're quiet. And we, we overall avoid conflict. Um, we're, we're not a group person. Um, uh, other people will annoy you when they wing it. We really hate when people wing it. We're like, uh, oh my gosh, how are, how are you doing that, right? We're very punctual, we're very focused, and, and we're really freaked out by people that aren't, and we love the details. So it, it is, um, leadership can be a bit of a learned thing for us because we have to let go of that perfectionism. Right, because you have to make so many decisions when you are a leader. It's really letting go of being right all the time, making quick decisions. We they call it analysis paralysis. We get caught in this analysis paralysis where we just want more data, more data, more data until we're sure. We, we, it's hard for us to take risks sometimes. Um, we sometimes because we're not very emotive, we might not inspire or or motivate a team so much. So we really uh, have to work on emotion of intelligence, connecting with our own emotions, giving some people some of the, some of the, the excitement in there, really getting ourselves in there. Um, 
And then, Michael, there's oh. a there's a great question by Alfred uh, in the chat. He said, "Am I right in noticing that well, SC and LC play a second fiddle?" Uh, it seems like he's asking, "What is the pairing? What pairing in the personality quadrants creates the best relationships?" Well, um, I think a well-rounded team has has a good mix of everything, and and the, the, when they're opposites on the chart, they make great pairings, but they really have to appreciate. And my, my wife is a visionary influencer and going through this and developing this gives me new respect for why she does things. And, and, um, and like, cause sometimes she'll just start talking about something that happened and, and I'm like, why is she telling me this? But she's just downloading. And so I realized that this is part of her process that as a logical creator, I want to solve her process, uh, her problem. But she's not bringing it to me to solve. She's bringing it to me because this is, how, this is how she shows that she loves me and she trusts me. And this is part of her process. So, um, and we, we are great because she is the person that's gonna go and have all, all these friends, not that I have friends, but you know what I mean? She can have all these relationships. She brings such joy and happiness and fun to our relationship, which I, I can sometimes be a bit dry but I have, to, I have to realize that's what she brings. And with that comes me um, making time for her. And just the same, I'm, I'm introverted. And I'll tell you, it's been, a, it's been a difficult lockdown because she's extroverted, she's in, I'm introverted. And so I'm the only person she has to talk to. And so it's like, I'm getting a lot of, uh, and so I've, we've learned that I, I can say, hey, honey, I just, I need an hour or two by myself or a couple hours by my, or this evening by myself. And she's like, she used to think that was insulting because she could never even, you know, something wrong with me, right? The visionary influencer is, is he rejecting me? That's her biggest fear, but it's no, it's, it's about me. It's not about her. So, um, and, and, and just the same, they all have to learn about. So th does that answer the question, Brad? And, and uh, yeah, and it was just a great question. And I believe Allison and I appreciate that in each other a lot because we're in opposite quadrants. Like, and even today I'm ready to run forward with something and she keeps me in check so that I don't run everyone off the cliff. You know, she's the analyzer. <laughs> she's the checker. Uh, that's awesome. And uh, I mean, if you're open to it, Michael, I think we have the breakout rooms uh, ready. This is incredible knowledge and how can we get interactive uh, with it? Um, yeah, I just want to handle supportive collaborator so we don't miss one. Perfect. I, I think I have all perfect. the other Thank ones. Thank you. Supportive collaborator, they are, um, their drivers are peace and harmony. They want everybody to get along. That's why they're great support staff. They're great at, at customer support. They're great at, at, at solving problems because they all they want to do is make a happy client, a happy team. Um, they're not as natural as a leader uh, as some of the others, but they still can be great leaders. Uh, they just have to learn that they are great problem solvers. They're great listeners. Um, their real thing is, is accepting the reins, accepting that they're a leader and managing conflict and, and being okay with change because they, they, you know, they don't like change by nature. So it's, it's, it's understanding that change is necessary, adapting to the change, becoming uh, decisive, taking charge, doing things more quickly, and, and, and also promoting themselves. There's a lot of amazing supportive collaborators that don't promote themselves. You know, some of the other people will be like, yeah, I can do this job. I can do this job. And they may be very, very qualified to do a better job, but they're like, oh, I'm just going to stay here in the background because it's more comfortable. So Again, it's just like all the, all, the, um, all the personality types is just really embracing who you are and understanding how to best work with that. So any other questions before, well, let me, let me if you have any, I'm gonna, re, I'm gonna go over for just a minute of what we're looking for in the breakout rooms and then and let me know any questions you want before the breakout rooms and then we'll come back and debrief. Um, so when you get, get into the, deep, the, the breakout rooms, first of all, if there's a supportive collaborator, you're in charge of the, the, of, of the room. If there's no supportive collaborator, then we want a logical uh, creator there. So we're, we're going to work on there. And if you are a dominant commander or visionary influencer, I want you to practice being a good follower. So empowering them, shutting up a little bit, letting them work their own process and just really being there and, and then participating, but be, but don't, you know, resist the urge to take charge because a great leader is a great follower. I've learned that after way too many years. Um, there's a lot of benefit in that. And then everybody goes through and, and shares what, they, what their um, leadership type is. 
one thing you learned about your strengths or your motivators, one thing that you can learn to do better about your weaknesses or relationships with other people. Um, how long are we going to give them, Brad, and, uh, for this? Uh, Allison, what do you think on that? Um, I say let's do 15 minutes. We have four, four in the group. See how I just practiced what Michael did, though I really wanted to say it. <laughs> <laughs> good job, good job, good job. What'd you, uh, what'd you say, Allison? You want to give them uh, like uh, 10 minutes, 15? Yeah, let's do 15. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. Uh, I'm going to make you host, Allison, as you've ran the breakout rooms before. Awesome. Um, cool. And, and, then, and then we're going to have one person quickly debrief about how the overall experience is. And the leader of the, the, the team can either nominate themselves or somebody else for that person. So as a leader, Right away, you all want to share. You want to pick who the leader is, and then and then the leader is going to determine. And, and and I love leaders that nominate themselves because you know you're standing up and say, "Hey, that that's okay. Be selfish every so often. You know that's okay." Or you can let somebody else do it. Who you want to empower? So anyway, just a couple challenges there. Welcome back, everyone. We got about twenty seconds left, and everyone will be back in the room with us. So hope you guys all enjoyed that. Uh, Hey, hey, Alfred, uh, uh, I think you asked the question. Alfred, was it you that asked the question uh, on the chat? Yes, yes, it was, yes. Yeah, just to clarify, so it's not that, um, that LCs and SCs play second fiddle to VIs and, and, and DCs, that, that they don't search out leadership as much as the other two. The, the dominant okay. commanders and visionary influencers, it's like they love being the leaders and they want to be the leaders. The other two... Um, can be leaders and will be leaders. That's just, it's not often their driver or their goal. You know, does that make sense more? Yeah, yeah, no, it does. No, definitely. Because like I was ex explaining in the, in the breakout, you know, I play competitive sports. I mean, as, as, as a youngster, you know, so, you know, so for, for me, the leadership that, I, you know, since I was, I, was, I, was, I was a captain is to be able to lead people, you know, but my my blind spot is not thinking, not having the knowledge, you know, to be able to, especially now since we're developing a um, a business with with my my partner Roger, is not 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 having that knowledge or information to 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 be to to be put on display. I think is is my biggest blind spot. You know, so I'm trying to develop that that self-awareness is that anything I put on the table is good enough to be on that table. Yeah. Yeah. Great. That makes sense. And, and what leadership type are you? Uh, uh, SC, supportive okay. collaborator. Yes. And it's interesting because you can be a different leadership type in different areas of your life. So maybe in, in your marriage or on the field or in business, you might have different, you you might be the same or you might be different. So that might, might show up different places in your life. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for that. Cool. All right. Are we more or less all back or we, maybe there's one. Yeah, I think we got everyone back. I mean, Michael, I'd love to hear some shares, like what learning happened. Yeah. Um, raise your hands. Uh, who's new? Yeah. Who's new? Uh, I'm going to go. <laughs> yeah. Alfred, go ahead, please. All right. Um, one of the, uh, as, as Steve brought this up um, in, in the group, we all there were four the four uh, leadership styles that were in the group. So that was that was pretty interesting. Um, one of the one of the um, questions Steve brought up is um, Michael talked about having a system in place to be able to you know to develop, and we're trying to figure out what that what that system or what those processes can be put in place for us to um, develop greater aware awareness of our leadership styles, but also to plug in um, where the issues, how can we reinforce those issues to be, you know, to become more rounded in, 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 in our different leadership styles. I yeah. think that was the biggest takeaway in that. Yeah. And my speak into that was something that Allison and I implemented last week. Uh, I'm a systems geek. I love efficiency. I love productivity. Um, so we added to our weekly checklist, our check-in. It now moved to the front of our KPIs. How are we showing up? What is our ways of being? Where's our professionalism? Brad, are you being focused? You know, Allison, where's your energy? So 
what if you took these quadrants and you added it to your weekly or monthly checklist to say, how am I showing up? Where's my strength and where's my area of growth? Mine is focus. And then how do you check in with each other? So that's something we learned from another webinar with uh, Hillary Strasner, who's leading the accelerator, who has an incredible uh, track record on running successful accelerators is start holding each other accountable every single week. And this is just one of the benefits of leadership academies is the feedback is neutral. You know, we can give each other feedback. You know, Anthony needs received it with coaching. Doug is in the accelerator. You know, Evan's been in this work for so long. When you enter a leadership academy, your feedback, what would it be like to give and receive feedback from a healthy place or people who stand for you? So I hope that lands, Alfred. In summary, bring it to something for your team as well as yourself once a week and once a month to assess. So I hope that supports. Um, Michael, additional feedback on that? That's just what was coming up for me. Yeah, Alfred, did you have, did you, were you able to come up with a, like a, for example, a system for yourself that might support some, some places you're running into? Uh, not really. I mean, that's why um, um, I'm excited to, uh, to, you know, to learn from you guys is trying to figure out um, what, what systems or what ideas can be put in place, you know, to, uh, to develop that. It could be as simple as, because did, did you mention, if I heard you correctly a couple minutes ago, you talked about how as an SC, sometimes you don't move until you have all the information. Correct, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So a system you might put in place is to give yourself 24 hours to make a decision or to, to, to put time lim limits in for a decision. So if you know a decision has to be made, that would get you out. Or you might, if you have a, a somebody else in your organization, maybe you could do like, um, have them, you know, work with them to make a decision quickly. So it's just little processes you put in your mind that that will that, that get you over some of those humps that in the past have been difficult. That makes sense. Thank you so much. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And who else is new here? Uh, who'd love to share? Curtis or Katie or Josephina? Come off mute. <laughs> I can. <laughs> I was waiting. As like a VI, I was waiting for uh -huh. <laughs> I was trying to wait. <laughs> um, so sharing like a from the group setting, right? Or just personally or both? Whatever you got. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, so it, it was pretty cool in our group having three VIs and one SC. So <laughs> which was kind of nice. We needed that SC. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Uh, and then hearing from, I guess it was kind of confirmation because hearing from the other uh, visionary influencers, I was like, yes, yes. So I'm like, okay, I am one because I have taken the test in the past and I was a, a DC, but I, I, I think that might've been, I, either I've grown since it was years and years ago, or it was maybe not accurate back in the time. Uh, but the, the blind spots are really interesting. Uh, I actually... I actually have learned to be very detail oriented just because I've been in project management and strategic initiatives, really strategy focused, operations focused my entire career. So it's really forced me to be detail oriented, but I hate, I do, I hate having to, I love to finish things. I, or I love to start things. Sorry. I absolutely, I, I want to innovate. <laughs> um, I, I don't want to see it through or operate or maintain. Uh, so knowing those blind spots and I definitely, I definitely put off confrontation. Um, even, even right now I've, I've got a, a contractor that's been working on my basement just from like non-professional, more personal thing. And it was supposed to be a six week project and it's turned into a six month project. And like, I've had to have my husband step in to be like the, you know, the enforcer. Cause I just can't, I just can't tell him like, I'm going to sue you if you don't, <laughs> if you don't like get this done. It makes me like stick to my stomach. <laughs> so that's, uh, and plus like, I know it, it was more um, evidence about over committing. I, I want to help as many people as possible. So and learning from Brad about some ways to potentially check that uh, on the, the commitments front uh, was incredibly helpful too. So those are my, those are my initial thoughts. Of course, I have many more thoughts because I'm a BI. <laughs> so I'm happy to continue, but I'll shut up for now. <laughs> Thanks. 
Okay, Katie, you know, one thing that I give to VI is it can help for, for the overcommitment. This is what I talk about little systems um, is anytime anybody asks you to do something, tell them to contact you in 24 hours and then you'll give your answer because wow. then you can step back, you can evaluate it. And if they really want you, they'll, they'll come back. And that can, that can literally just be a life changer by implementing that into, into your life. Love um, it. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. One other thing that you said. Um, yeah, I, I think we can change through through our lives. We can we can definitely change. I think that's might might have been what you experienced. And um, oh, I think highly highly successful people will like you said. You're a VI, but you you learn to be great at details. I think that's where really high performers are in this world, because I mean, look at Elon Musk. You know, he is a, a visionary influencer, but. When there's a problem with Tesla, at least according to his biography, you know, he, he would go down and get on the floor and like, where is the problem at? I want, I want to show me the problem. And, you know, the, the Zuckerberg is like that too. And, and it's like, they're not afraid to get their hands dirty. And I think, or, or Zuckerberg is the other way, but he's learning to be a public figure. Same with Bill Gates. And so I think when you can really embrace your shadow side, you know, to use uh, you know, the psychology thing, then that's where high performance. So great, great share, Katie. Thanks so much for here. Yeah. Thank you. So who else is new? We got JB, Katie Siebert, Zuzi, if I pronounce that right, or Carlos. Who else gets to come off mute and share? And Molly, Hi. see you for the first time. Hey, Brad, thank you so much. Uh, I am here because of you. So I appreciate you for being in communication with me. Um, so I'm actually, I'll be saying something that I am part of all the different quadrants and different aspects of my life. <laughs> um, but generally I'm a VI, but I know that I apply different style based on the situation, based on some people. Uh, so I don't know if that's the right approach, but it works for me. Um, but it's really fascinating to hear from all the different leaders in our group. And we all have strengths and weaknesses, I think strengths can actually even be weaknesses also if you do it too much. Uh, so it's, it's finding that harmony, I think that's a key for great leadership. Uh, so not one thing is, you know, should be too powerful to the point where it become a negative thing. Uh, so I, I try to learn that uh, from my own mistakes and failures in my own personal life and professional life that um, I just uh, evaluate situations and based on the people that I'm dealing with, uh, I, I change my style and it, it works for me. Good. Mm. Good to hear. Awesome. I just want to add, you know, that really resonated for me and I just kind of put something in the chat too. I've noticed the same thing when I started first learning about these, you know, many months ago, I was like, hmm, that's interesting. I can notice where I show up differently in different situations. Mm -hmm. And I think what the key here, the, the part that makes this really exciting for me, and this is my analyzer, I guess, that, that steps in, I'm like, oh, wait a second, I'm analyzing this now. I love that, um, that there are tools for each one. So, so it's like, what's the next level? If you recognize that, hey, I've got different qualities based on the situation, the next level is, okay, what tools match up with those qualities so that if I am showing up as a logical creator in this particular situation, what are my tools? And I think this actually kind of ties in. Let me, let me scroll back up because there was a couple questions that came through um, that were kind of in line with this is, you know, um, it, like what are the, like Aaron says, what are the actionable steps, right? And I'm, I'm the same way, Aaron. I'm like, okay, great, great theory. Now, what am I supposed to do with this? So, um, Michael, can you speak into that a little bit? You know, when we're, when we're recognizing our personality type, what's the next step? How do we apply tools to effectively make the most of that type? Well, yeah, and that, that's why, I mean, that, that, those are great questions. And that's a, that's a very big question because it, it matters your leadership type. It matters your leadership situation. And it's, it's also individual because, you know, there, there's three or four main ones to every leadership type. And everybody I talk to, two or three of them really resonate and one doesn't resonate at all. So um, that's part of the reason why we do this, these breakouts and things. You're welcome to drop me a note and, and tell me your situation as well. And, and I can do that. Or if you want to just talk to me now, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to give you some on-the-fly coaching if that helps. But um, yeah, great, great question. I can't, I can't, I don't have the one magical key for each one. Well, you've got to pay a million dollars for it, but you know, that, that's, that's what it is. But um. <laughs> 
Thank you. Well, I think the, the, the key is there are tools and, and it's important to, to know where we are starting from in the first place and then you can dig into those tools. So there was also a great question um, that came in a little bit earlier. Um, Adam asked about, um, you know, how does society, and I love this question, like what an analyzer question, how does society break down into these leadership categories? Is it uh, an equal split? Like, you know, are there 25% of us are dominant commanders and so on? Or is there sort of a majority and minority uh, of quadrants just when we look at the world? <laughs> as a whole? That's a great question. Actually, I have my stats up of who took my, my quiz. And again, this is not <laughs> society. This is just who took them. Let me just find them here really quickly. Um, do I have them? And actually, Michael, while you're doing that, this is Adam, I asked the question. And I think it's really interesting, Allison, that you kind of tagged it as an analyzer thing. But the reality is I'm a VI. And I'm asking from the perspective of like, am I special? You know, <laughs> it's a very VI thing, right? <laughs> That's a great, <laughs> Adam, you nailed yourself. <laughs> yeah, totally. But what other VIs have abandonment issues? <laughs> I'd like to chime in on that. And I have a, I have a question. <laughs> By the way, thank you again in advance before completion, Brad and Allison. And nice to meet you, Michael. So I noticed that having worked in the financial markets for years, I used to be more of a DC working in a male dominated industry. And then over time with personal and professional development, I became more of what I consider my authentic self as a VI and the results came back as a visionary influencer. And in the group with my, with my little, my, my group there, I noticed that immediately, even though I heard the instructions allowing an SC to take charge, my initial was going into VI as soon as I went into the room. Like, hi, who are you? And wanting to engage, and where are you from? And, you know, before I even paused for half of a second. So I was defaulting right into that. My question is, and what I noticed is that I often can be a supportive collaborative also, and I am a supportive co collaborative. What would serve me best, I believe, is leaning in and getting support from the supportive collaborators as a, as a DCVI combo. And I don't do that, the history of lone wolfing. And, and I, I got this and I can do it all myself and realizing that that overcommitment, thinking I can do it all itself with these big visions and goals is not realistic. And then I'm starting things that I'm not completing. And so it's like how to, um, you know, uh, access or, or, or lean in and get the support from the SCs. I know how to be it. The question is, as a VI and a DC, how to know to lean in and get that support to, so I can get things, you know, see those visions to completion. Yeah, and Tina, I think you did a great start to that by, in the group, pausing. And I think because you can't, you, you have this great energy, this great infectious energy, but be careful because that can really intimidate people or turn people in that quadrant off. And so, um, and, and that doesn't mean don't shine, but just, just match their energy a bit, right? And, and you'll get them on. And, and, and I think you're on the right track. A lot of it's identification because once you identify them to get them on the right track, you want to talk about how you want them to work with you to make this harmony, harmonious. You want the team to win. You see them as a crucial part in this and they will go to the mat with you. Once you have the loyalty of an SC and they believe in you, they'll do anything for you. They'll do anything for the team. They will work literally not sleep for 40 days. So the team can, can be victorious. You know, I'm, I'm being a little dramatic, but they will. And, and, and people that are leaders need strong SCs. They, they need, they need strong they need strong, uh, uh, you know, analytical people. And so you're, you're exactly right. They even need, you know, the, the teams need all of these. And it's just, it's just putting them in the right role and giving them what they need to succeed and, and um, watching out for their blind spots. Exactly right. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Um, so uh, I had, I don't have these by percentages, but I had uh, 225 DCs. 343 VIs, 156 LCs, and 292 SCs. So is that our stat? Are you talking about the number of people? 
Yeah, take this so far. Oh, you mean, okay, I thought you meant for this webinar. I'm like, your math <laughs> yeah. is wrong, Michael. <laughs> no, way wrong. So VIs were the most at 343. Okay, got and it. Then SCs were the next at 292. And then DCs were 225. And then 156 LCs. But that's obviously a very, that's not statistically accurate for, for you know, that could, could mean a lot of things, so. Mm. Yeah. I think it's interesting. I have to a question that I can interject. Yeah, sure. Go yeah, ahead. Thanks, Katie. Okay, sorry. So um, my question is, if you uh, identify in a certain quadrant and the people that are around you that know you really well are going to probably assume and already know that you are in that quadrant, it's going to come as no surprise because that's how you show up, whether it's at work or at home in your relationships. So when you acknowledge that and you want to practice getting into the other quadrants, if your coworkers or your family members kind of call you on that of like, wait, what's going on here? Why are you acting differently? Do you have any kind of coaching to help bridge that gap as you know, you come in and you're like, I'm an SC. So if I want to start pushing myself more into like a DC category to branch out of my comfort zone, but people are going to look at me like, what is going on here? Cause this is not the SC that I know. So any, uh, mm. any feedback there? Oh, that, that's an interesting one. Um, and, and the language you used and, and, and caught me off guard because I don't see it as, but maybe that's correct of moving into another quadrant. Um, Cause that's what you said, right? If I'm in one quadrant, I want to move into the other. I don't picture that that way, but that might not be, but that might not be incorrect. I do it more as embracing who I am and being very aware but also, I guess you're right, because an SC does want to be a little bit more DC. I know, I'm going to reflect. I'm going to think about that. That's you, you, you made me think about something new. Um, how to do that? Um, again, that's very situational. And, um, and yeah, I think it's going to be out of, out of character sometimes. And um, what, what quadrant are you? I am very much a strong SC. <laughs> <laughs> and you, and, and why, why do you bring this up? What's the specific situation? Let's start there. I don't really, I don't have an, a specific situation. I guess um, how I show up and work is very much a supportive collaborator, yes. um, but to kind of assert myself more into a dominant or uh, leadership type of role and show up um, that way. But I've, with my coworkers for a while. So they've seen me as the supportive person for, for quite some time. I, I have a question for you, if, if I can jump in. Um, are, do you view yourself as an analyzer at all? Uh, no, I don't view myself that way, no. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm almost gonna inquire with Evan. Uh, you know, Evan's been my mentor in so many different ways in leadership academies and he's incredible at, let's call flexing. Evan, do you have any input on Katie's question regarding how to preface the relationship when they're flexing into different styles? <laughs> Honesty, candor. Um, one of the techniques that I really like is to paraphrase. So when you're really trying to connect with somebody, uh, particularly somebody who has a different personality style than you, to just say, hey, just I want to check. This is what I'm hearing you say. Am I am I correct? Um, I find that to be a, a really nice kind of transitional way. Uh, so someone feels you care and you actually can hear them. Um, and I, I'll just throw one other one other thing, because Brad will remember this from my book. Listen for the kernel of truth. Listen for why the other person is right. We tend to either listen for why they're wrong because we want, somebody else mentioned this earlier, um, that they, you know, that they're defensive and they want to, you know, prove that they can outsmart someone. So listen to why someone is right. So people listen for why someone's wrong and some people just listen for space to speak themselves, but not really listening. But if you actually sit back and say, why are they right? Or could they be part right? Or what can I learn? And if you're, you come from is that, you're going to connect with everybody at a, at a really, really deep level. Is that what you were looking for, Brad? Uh, my smart ass wants to say, no, that's not right. 
It's not about being. Uh, <laughs> me and Evan had an incredible relationship. Of, uh, we do. We do. Not we getting do. much done. <laughs> <laughs> you know that was a great question, and and I'm, I'm not stymied. Uh, I don't think I've I've given you a great answer. So I'm going to. What I'd like to do is gift you a, a coaching session because I'd I'd really like to um, do you justice and, and and appreciate you for having the courage to 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 say something. And I always like to add value. So uh, drop me an email. I'm sure you can find me somehow on this, and and I'll send you a link. And I'd really like to. Um, to, uh, to, to gift that to you. And, and so I can learn wow. and then hopefully you can get some benefit out of it too. That, uh, that thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I, Evan, whether you answer the question or not, that was some great feedback. So <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. It's powerful. Uh, I'm noticing our time, Allison. I want to, you know, respect everyone's time as well as Michael's here. So Absolutely. Um, can I, can I say one more thing and I'll turn it over to you, Allison? Please. 100%. Go for it. Yeah. This is the first time I did this presentation. And if you got value out of it in the chat, can you just write a couple sentences of a uh, testimonial? Hey, uh, you know, I got, this is what I got out of it. These are the takeaways. I liked it. If, if you didn't like it, you can write that, but I'm not going to use it. So, you know, write whatever you want. But <laughs> And then, uh, and then if you're doing that, you're, you're also giving me permission to use that and maybe your first name or something and, in, in, in in, you know, a testimonial. Is that okay? I asked that, Allison. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I love it because my putting on my digital marketer hat, I would, I would advise you to do that. So, <laughs> so I love it. I love it. Yeah. Positive reviews are amazing. So that always helps other people, you know, see the value of what we get here, which was of course, massively value thank valuable thank you so much michael this was incredible